Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz EV. What makes a Mercedes-Benz EV different? Electric is what you uh, get you there. The vehicle's all electric. The feeling all Mercedes. Choice all yours. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQ. We'll talk about Jaden Daniels' pro day at LSU yesterday. And also, Ice Cube talks about the $5 million offer to Caitlin Clark to play in the big three. Jeff Passan of the Mothership. You can see him today, all day, all night, and uh, opening night of baseball here. And then uh, you have the Rangers hosting the Cubs at 7.30 Eastern, the exclusive national presentation. Great to have you back on, Jeff. Let me start with uh, the Dodgers with Shohei Otani and any updates or anything that you expect here in the next couple of days. This is going to be a while, Dan. And, and it's going to be a while, I think, because we have to understand what the investigations going on into this situation are. Number one, there is a federal investigation into the bookmaking operation uh, that allegedly was taking place in Southern California. And, uh, you know, Shohei Otani is like a, a tiny little speck of a much more sprawling uh, look into what was going on. And because he's Shohei Otani and because of the salaciousness of the allegations, it feels like he's a much bigger part of that. But in reality, the, this case is so big, um, it, it could take a while yet for there to be resolution there. And Major League Baseball at the same time, uh, generally speaking, its investigation tends to align, at least when being wrapped up, with the larger criminal investigations that are going on. And if the criminal investigation is not going to be wrapped up for a long time, chances are Major League Baseball's is not going to either, unless there is clear and obvious establishment of Shohei Otani's version of the story that we've heard so far, which is that Ipe Mitsuhara, his interpreter, stole four and a half plus million dollars from him to pay off gambling debts. Now, one thing we still do not know is who Otani's camp reached out to in terms of uh, law enforcement officials to say, hey, this guy stole four and a half million dollars, start looking into it and start looking into charges. And uh, not only do we not know it, but when our reporters, Tisha Thompson and Paul Levine, are asking Otani's camp, uh, they're saying we're not going to tell you anything. And so it, it's it's a missing piece, Dan, that would go a really long way, I think, to validating Otani's story. Uh, right now, we have his version of the story, and logically, a, a fair bit of it makes sense, but there are also questions that are unanswered. And when you have unanswered questions and the story changing like it did at the beginning, uh, you know, there's going to be skepticism and cynicism about the version that, that he's telling. When's the last time you remember a team that it was World Series or bust like the Dodgers? Last year with the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> like every year with the Dodgers. I, I mean, when you, uh, you know, let's. I, I, but I it's more so I, this year. Every year with them, I really do because they they put these mega themes together. All, like that's that's what they are, and they don't. I'm sorry, Dan. They don't put teams together to go win the NL West. They don't put teams together to go win the National League pennant. If they don't win the World Series, it's a disappointing season because. They've got Mookie Betts, who is still in his prime, isn't always going to be. They've got Freddie Freeman, who's still in his prime, isn't always going to be. And yeah, they added Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Tyler Glass now um, and Teoscar Hernandez and turned a team that had World Series aspirations into a team with maybe like a little more World Series aspirations. So I, I, I understand what you're saying, um, but I, I look at the Atlanta Braves too. Like let's let's consider the window that they're in right now when they have this incredible core of players. And they've got Chris Sale coming over, you know, a guy who's no spring chicken and Charlie Morton, uh, who in all likelihood is going to be retiring after this season. Uh, things are going to change for them too. So are they World Series or bust? I, I mean, I, I would suggest that, yes, they're in the same boat that the Dodgers are. 
couple other things uh, before I get to baseball today. Uh, the Oakland A's situation. How awkward is this that they're trying to find, what, a temporary home before they get to their new permanent home, but they still have their old home? Yeah. Imagine the most awkward situation that you've ever been in and then multiply it by 10 and it's still not as awkward as the A's being in Oakland. Um, the A's essentially have said to the city of Oakland, we don't want to be here. Um, and, it, you know, that is against the backdrop of all of these players playing in this awful stadium uh, and fans feeling like this isn't even our team anymore. And so you're going to have an empty stadium. You're going to have a city in Las Vegas that maybe doesn't want them because <laughs> why would you want a team owned by someone in John Fisher who is so willing to gut the franchise to the point that it's major league. And, and now granted the A's on the field this year, Dan are not going to be nearly as bad as they were last year. They may, you know, they may not be the worst team in the American league, but they're still going to stink. And it's like you have 29 major league baseball franchises and and one team that's called the Major League Baseball franchise, but is run like the the worst minor league app that you've ever seen. But is there a record for the fewest number of fans to go watch a team their home games? I don't I don't know if somebody Paulie, do you have did the A's set the all time record last year? We're checking. They had eight hundred thirty two thousand on the season. They averaged ten thousand a game. In comparison, the Dodgers had three point eight million people show up. Yeah. 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 That's definitely not the lowest that it's been, but we may see it this year. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Mike Trout, I think, is turning 33. At mm -hmm. what point does Mike Trout say, maybe I need to have a change of scenery? Or when do the Angels say, are you thinking about a change of scenery? It's a really good question. Like There, there are a few things every spring that I try to go to because they're interesting or because they're going to be particularly newsworthy. And Mike Trout's first media availability this year was high on that list because, you know, I wanted to ask him that same question. Like, how much longer can you oblige? Yeah. How much longer are you going to stay with a team that you've been to the playoffs with one time in your illustrious career? And that one time you got swept out by the Kansas City Royals. Like, that that's the wildest part of Mike Trout's career. Um, he's one of the, you know, one of the five to 10 best players that we've ever seen. And he still hasn't won a playoff game. And, you know, the clock is ticking now. Uh, he's, he's not, he's not going to be getting a whole lot better in his mid to late thirties. And I think he desperately wants to be somewhere where he can win, but there's that tug of loyalty too, Dan, like he's been an angel his entire career. And if he's going to win, he wants it to be, with that organization. But the, the question is, can that organization win with Artie Moreno owning the team and making the decisions that get in the way of its ability to do so? Um, they've, they've got some really interesting young players. I think Logan O'Hoppy, their catcher, uh, is going to be really good. Zach Neto, their shortstop, Nolan Shanuel at first base. Like, they've got some guys, but do they have enough in that division? Not even close because the American League West is nasty this year. The Texas Rangers won the World Series last year. The Houston Astros have been to seven consecutive American League Championship Series. And I think the Seattle Mariners have the best rotation in baseball. Um, so hmm. you've got you've got all these teams around. And then the Angels, who uh, have gutted their farm system, uh, have not spent intelligently at the major league level, and couldn't win when they had – arguably the two best players in the entire game there at the same time for a six year period. So what suggests that they're going to be doing it now? Talking to Jeff Passan of the mothership ESPN has the national presentation of opening night. It'll be the Rangers and the Cubs at seven 30 Eastern. All right. If not the Dodgers or Braves in the national league, then who? 
there's a really good argument to be made that the Phillies are a better team or at least a better playoff team when you've got Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola at the top of a rotation and uh, a team that has not just the the hitting depth that they do it, their bullpen's really really good and so I, I like it's a do not sleep on this bullpen good group and so I think Philadelphia is probably the obvious answer what about Arizona though like let's not forget they made it to the World Series last year, and then they go out and add Jordan Montgomery. They add Eduardo Rodriguez. They bring back Lourdes Gurriel. They bring in Jock Peterson and Randall Grichik. Like, were they and, a great they, story or a great team? They were a great team in October, Dan. And and the in October caveat is important. And, and I think it, it speaks to the sport of baseball right now. I don't give a damn what you did between April and September. If you play better in October than someone else, the way that baseball is, you can be walked in glory forever. All it takes is one really good hot month. And that's what the Diamondbacks had. So mm -hmm. even if they were a mediocre to, to slightly above average team during the regular season, I, I remember doing a story in the World Series about just toward the end, like, five games in how clean it had been like the amount of incredible defensive plays that the Texas Rangers and Arizona Diamondbacks made in the World Series made it a an extremely enjoyable series to watch even if it was only five games like there was good ball being played and in the Diamondbacks adding those two starting pitchers that I mentioned on top of Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly and and you know tapping that rotation with Brandon Fott who in the World Series was really good like it's a formidable roster, and I'm excited to see year two of the Corbin Carroll show. Um, I, I think he's got a chance to be a top five MVP guy this year after winning rookie of the year and being in the mix last year, and I think he's going to be even better this season than he was. The American League, Rangers defending champs. Astros always get there. Yankees, <laughs> Yankees brought in some talent. So if it's not – oh, you're, you're, you're not – quite all in on the Yankees there? I'm not there on the Yankees okay. right now. All right. All right. The, the, Gar the Garrett Cole injury sure. is an absolute killer. And yes, they added Marcus Strum into their rotation. And sure, like Luis Hill looked great in spring training. Um, but I worry that they're too old. I worry that they are injury prone and they lost the best pitcher in Major League Baseball for at least two months to an elbow injury that you know, if we're just assuming it's going to heal, I, I've i known elbows for too long to know that they do not heal on a <laughs> schedule. Like, I've just seen it too many times where you assume a guy is going to be back at a particular point. This is not a soft tissue injury. You know, this is nerve and this is ulnar collateral ligament. And these are things that uh, when you try and put them on a schedule, laugh at you. So uh, if they listen, if they get Garrett Cole back um, and get him back healthy and back at the level that he's been at, and if Carlos Rodon can pitch to his contract, um, then yeah, they, they're going to be in the mix. I, I still do not think they're as good as the Orioles, Dan. We were talking about this the other day with how tough it's going to be for Hall of Fame voters looking at starting pitchers moving forward because Verlander's a Hall of Famer. Kershaw yes. is a Hall. I mean, there's only. Scherzer. Scherzer's a those Hall of Famer. Those, those are the three. But yep. but after that, is there a starting pitcher currently in baseball who you could see is on the the projection to be a Hall of Famer? I mean, I think Cole is probably in the mix. I think Zach Wheeler is putting himself into the mix. I think if Jacob deGrom hadn't been hurt, he's got, you know, the two Cy Youngs, it, but his career feels more lincecum right yeah. now than it does Hall of Fame. And, you know, he's going to be... But aren't we adjusting our numbers of, like, you... Oh, gonna get 100%. To two, 200 you, wins? That's not going to happen with these younger guys. I mean, I mean, you have to adjust your numbers. And, and in the same way, I think that voters now, Dan, take into account something like on-base percentage 
more than they did in the past. I think I think we're smarter as a collective when it comes to Hall of Fame voting in terms of figuring out what's right, but also contextualizing it um, throughout generations. And if you hold starting pitchers who pitched in the 2010s and 2020s to the same sort of standards that guys used to have, you're literally not going to have a single pitcher who goes in the Hall of Fame from this generation. Like, it, you're just not because it's it's a different job and it's a different game and it's you know i i think it stinks i don't like that this is where starting pitching has gone it's my biggest pet peeve about baseball these days that you took this group of players who collectively take up half of the sport and you essentially said we are not going to allow you to be a star because you're not going to go more than five or six innings and that that I think has been detrimental to the game, and uh, it's it's problematic going forward. And something that uh, whether it's through uh, active rule changes or something a little bit more passive at the youth level, where they start emphasizing going deeper into games rather than throwing really hard, um, you know, it's just a priority that the sport hasn't put at the forefront, and it's been detrimental to the game accordingly. Yeah, it's almost like if I'm a pitcher, a young pitcher, I want to be a closer than I do a starter because I probably have a better chance there of being a star, maybe making a lot of money and having, I don't know, if you want to pitch five innings, that's great, but you might have a I shift. Still, I, st- I still think, I still think, look, my, my kid's a pitcher and, and he wants to be the ace. You know, there's still something among players about starting it's just that they they don't look at what their duty is the same way that they have in the past. If you get through five or six innings, you've done your job. Yeah, but you would you rather a start a game or close a game? I'd rather close a game. In today's I baseball, I'd rather close yeah. a game. That's really interesting because you get paid 15 million bucks for one inning of work. Yes. Like because you get to sit in, in the in the clubhouse until the sixth inning and yes. then meander. Yeah. yeah, it's a better job. You're right about that. Like <laughs> it's a much better job. But would you, you know, you're you're a, you're a star, Dan. Thank you. Like, yeah, thank you. It, well, you are, and and I feel like you'd want to be on the mound at the beginning of the game rather than. Yeah, but game. if I'm only going five and a half, then no. Okay, okay, yeah. that's fair. I want to be the guy who shuts you down, and then all of a sudden everybody comes out, and congratulates me, and then you know I'm I walk off. Heroes well. What kind of what kind of closer would you be? Would you be the closer who who over time just got fatter and fatter and wow. and just embraced the? T- no, I'm not saying you have gotten. You look fantastic, but I'm saying I feel like you would embrace the lifestyle of the closer, where you would be the guy who, you know, was drinking beers after the game and having snacks and sitting in the bullpen and flicking seeds. Like, I would if be you're going to be... A goose gossage. Gonna, yeah, exactly. If you're going to be a closer, like, go full send yeah. on your closer. Yes. I'm going to tell you what I'm throwing, and I'm going to see if you can hit it. And they can't, because no, you're they Dan can't. Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. Baby. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, have a great day. Always great to catch up with you. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Happy that, opening day, everyone. That's Jeff Passon of the Mothership ESPN opening night. You have the World Series champion Rangers hosting the Cubs 730 Eastern. Play